Okay, can we get the crash cart? Lucky's just crashed and it's happened before we've even had a chance to give him the antidote. Is there a laryngoscope anywhere? This week on Bondi Vet. This tumour is absolutely huge. So to see it coming out from his chest, it's almost like he's got an udder. Oh, you've got to be f***ing kidding me. <laughs> like, what the f***? No, it just doesn't have any structure. I mean, mm. once you get your finger, I mean, it just... In Atlanta, Arvid is paying a house call to check up on his longtime patient Roxy and her very worried owners, Allison and Clint. Well, hello, hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, Good to see you man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's it? There she is. Look, she's hiding. She's like, Hi. no, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing? 12-year-old Roxy has been suffering with a mysterious illness that's left her weak and struggling to walk. We got Roxy when she was about six months old. We had been married about a year when we adopted her. And so she's our first child. It was like love at first sight for me. There was just something about her that I had to have her. And she's literally been the perfect dog for our family. She means the world to us. Over the last years or so she's really just started to get weaker started having a lot of shaky legs and just kind of started getting increasing lethargic she just kind of lay on the couch or on the floor and not do much Roxy used to love to go on walks she used to like to go to the dog park and play with other doggies but she just doesn't seem to have the strength to do any of that anymore she likes to sing for us, which we can still get her to sing. You wanna sing, baby? See, that's the Roxy we gotta get back. After a long investigation, Arvid's just discovered the cause of Roxy's dramatic decline, a rare condition called hyperparathyroidism. That's usually caused by a tumor. Usually, you know, those are benign, okay? But that tumor is causing parathyroid hormone, excessive parathyroid hormone release in the body, which is telling the body it needs more calcium, so more calcium is being pulled from the bones when that happens over a period of time, or long enough, it can, it can cause problems. Weakness in the muscles, bone pain, kidney failure. To reverse the process, Roxy will need surgery to remove the overactive gland. We're glad to have a diagnosis, but scared, knowing that the end treatment is surgery and that we will have to put her under anesthesia. We're scared to death. I see the nerves. Yeah. I see the nerves. So you, do you expect to, Roxy will improve in her condition and be able to have quality of life? Yes, yes. I will say, you know, with the surgery, we won't see change overnight, right. you know, because we've got to give the body a chance to adjust. But Roxy's always been a fighter though. Sounds good. Let's get her better. We're gonna get her better. We're gonna get her better. <laughs> Is that okay with you, Roxy? Where you? There she is. Roxy has been my patient for 10 years. That's a long time. So she's almost like my pet. They become like family. Yeah, we're gonna have an easy day today. Easy day today. And their owners, we all become like family. All Thank right. you. I'll get in touch with you real soon. Yep. So it's my duty to help Roxy feel much better and to um, get her on the road to recovery. I got to do it. Hi, Hi. we're here to check Roxy Richardson for surgery. I think we're all pretty nervous. Um, she's not a young doggy and we're a little scared to put her under anesthesia, but we know we don't really have much of a choice. Well, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? 
nervous. Okay. Right here. Nervous. Okay. Understandable. Try to go get you some breakfast and some coffee and just relax and uh, I'm gonna take good care of her. Okay. All right. All right. So today is here and we're here to take care of Roxy. I diagnosed her with hyperparathyroidism. We did the ultrasound and the ultrasound showed that she has a growth in the right parathyroid gland. We're here to take it out. I love you, baby. And hopefully, a lot of those clinical symptoms that she was having starts to wane and she can at least regain some of that youth back. That's the point of doing this surgery. That's the goal. Let's go this way. You're okay. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Here we go, girl. Go and take a nice deep sleep, and uh, we'll see you when you wake up. As surgery gets underway, outside a dramatic storm front is bearing down on Atlanta. It looks like it's nighttime and it's only yeah. like one. Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Oh my gosh, Let that's me... bad. That's so bad. Oh my God. Dr. Edward, it's bad out there. Unbelievable. Right when we're about to start her surgery, the power goes out. You can't make this up. Uh, do we have a light? Like a... Yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, right now, the power is still out and we are trying to get the power on so that I can get the surgery done. The generator doesn't do the lights, huh? I'll hold my phone up. Thank goodness for lights on cell phones. You know, my staff, they jumped right in with their cell phones and pitched in. Right now, the lights on those cell phones are not only saving this surgery, but potentially saving Roxy's life. So right now I'm looking for the nodule in the parathyroid gland that's causing the problem. These surgeries are not easy surgeries to do anyway, but when you add darkness into the equation, that makes it a hundred times more difficult. Uh, you want to be able to see. This is unreal. Kira, we're going to have to and monitor her heart and everything. Yeah, I'm monitoring her right yeah. now here. Yeah. Make sure her heart rate's not dropping. As well as losing light, Arvid is operating without critical monitoring equipment. So everything is shutting down. The power's gone out. The monitor's gone out. I mean, I guess what I could do is just close her up and um, do it another day. But I've already come so far. So I'm trying to weather through this literal storm. And it's not just Arvid who's been left in the dark. Since the power cut off, Roxy's stressed owners have had no updates from the practice. I know Roxy's mom is on pins and needles. She's probably calling me a few bad words because by now she should have heard something from me and she hasn't. But I don't think I'm gonna call her and tell her that, hey, I'm doing Roxy's surgery in the dark. I got the thyroid and the parathyroid gland out. So I'm done with that. Now it's time to close her up and wake her up. That's what we call improvisation. The power never came back on, but I was able to finish the surgery. Thank God for that. Now is just hoping that we get this calcium and everything under control so that Roxy can go into a full recovery. Come on, Roxy, let's go. Let's go. All right. Two hours later, the lights finally come back on. And enormously relieved Allison and Clint 
are back to pick up their girl. I feel relieved that we're gonna get to see her. I'm glad that the surgery's over and it went well. Um, I feel exhausted from being stressed all day. It was an interesting day. Here we go. This way, this way. there we go. Come here. Yeah. She wants to go to the oh, oh. <laughs> She knows where the door is. Everything was going smooth. Everything was going according to plan. Got Roxy on the table to do her surgery. The storm hit, the power went out. I saw on the Facebook page that the power was out. Uh, I was like, no. It was crazy. Um, but it all worked out. It all worked out and uh, I think she's ready to go. I surprised myself on this one. <laughs> like I say, we don't ever know what we can do until we're put in the midst of adversity and we're forced to overcome. And uh, I'm just hoping everything goes well from this point moving forward. All right, Roxy, you're on the road to recovery, sweetie. In Richmond, one of Scott's long-term patients is enjoying a few quiet cuddles with devoted owner, Sarah. Badger is our 12 and a half year old Irish Wheaton Terrier that we've had since he was about six months old and he's been the best dog we could have ever wished for. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't find him dressed as a witch or a fairy or a, you know, he's just been an amazing part of the family. But Badger's been battling a massive, low-level malignant tumour. Sore, isn't it? And despite two major surgeries, it keeps growing back. So we're sort of worried that if it isn't addressed, it's going to split the skin because it really is stretched. And it's like, sort of, it goes all the way underneath, sort of almost like a sort of tennis ball size and then this bit at the underneath. So it's, it's pretty grotesque. We sort of promised ourselves that we wouldn't operate again. Scott's done both operations previously and um, we kind of drew a line under it and went, right, that's, we're done. We're not going to do that again. But it's sort of got bigger and bigger and, you know, he's relatively happy in every other way and we're now kind of like back in the situation of, what do we do? Dad, do you want to go for a walkies? Yeah. Oh, come on, Bella. Oh. Come on, please. Good boy. We've got to go and see Scotty. OK? Come on. Good boy. We've got to get you up the hill. Okay. As Sarah heads in to see Scott, she's bracing herself boy, for the possibility on. that Badger will need a third surgery. Come on, then. Let's do it. That's a good boy. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, Sarah. How are you? All right, here we are again. Oh, hello, Badger. How's he doing? All right. Yeah, he's doing OK, but, you know, the lump's really big now, so I, I think... See, um, can't you? Yeah, I think it's okay. kind of decision time, so another chat with Scott. Oh, oh do you want to take a seat? Yes. He'll be right with you. Just so you know you're here. Thanks, love. All right. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Scott. Hello, Badger. How, How are you, mate? You are right? You're a very happy boy today. Goodness me. I can see why you've come in. Yeah, it's, it's not slowing down. It is not. It's quite monstrous at the moment, isn't it, mate? All right, all right, yes. all right. Yes. Oh, right, is that right. a bit tender? Come oh, here. Bless you. Come on, let's keep, this, let's keep the happy happy boy, <laughs> hey? <laughs> the waggy tail's what we want. Come on then, Badge, you're going to come this way? Come to the consult come room? On. Come Good on. Boy. Good boy. Well done. Good lad, didn't you come? There we go. Well done. So it's been a few weeks since we've seen each other and unfortunately that has grown, hasn't it? Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's not slowing down. No. And how's he being affected by it, do you think? Well, I think slowing down, <laughs> he's, um, you know, he's not as inclined to sort of go for a walk as much as he was. You can tell it's just really cumbersome and it's awkward. He's finding it hard to find a comfortable spot to sit down. This is a massive tumour that's really pulling his weight off to one side, which will be affecting his balance, will be causing an increase in arthritic development in the back legs. There's a lot of negatives to this thing, besides the fact that it's stretching the muscles that it surrounds and causing him discomfort. 
He still wags his tail whenever anyone goes near him. He still wants to go for a walk, albeit a short one. So I feel like we're doing him an injustice if we just leave it. OK, well, but let's... It's, oh, it's a very hard decision, really. It, it is, it is, and we flip-flop about it constantly whenever we see each other, don't we? This is not the first time that we've considered removing Badger's tumour. It's a slow-growing sarcoma, which is a malignant type of tumour, but it's one that doesn't tend to spread. It just continues to regrow in the same site. Now, unfortunately, the size of this tumour and where it is means that we can't ever remove it completely. So, unfortunately, it keeps growing back, and this is now the third time that's happened. So I think what we might have to do is just pop a muzzle on him. All right, champ, it's Hannibal Lecter time. Yeah, come here, bud. Come on. So he's a gentleman until he's challenged, and then yeah. he turns into a bit of a... A bit of a beast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't you, mate? Hey? No, you just know your own mind, don't you? Yes. Okay, you ready, Sarah? I'm gonna pop him up. Do you want me to lift or are you? No, we'll go. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. This tumour is absolutely huge. You sort of see it coming out from his chest. It's almost like he's got an udder, isn't it? Like it's just. It's like a, a cricket ball, isn't yeah. it? And, and it's sort of that hard as well. Yeah, it's huge. There's positives and negatives. Yeah. But I think the thing is, is that he is a lovely, otherwise healthy family dog. Yeah. Except for this. So if I can rid him of this one last time and give him the, you know, old age, genteel life in Richmond that he deserves, well, I think he deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. The worst thing would be for him to not come through surgery. I think, I, you know, we haven't got a choice now. He's just, you know, he's in too much discomfort. I think we've got to do it. So, um, yeah, I am worried. Cheerio, Boise. Be good. Come through it. OK. All right, All right thank okay. you. OK, love to you and the family. See you later. Right. Bye. See ya. Bye. Okay. Say bye, Mummy. Say bye. <laughs> oh, I know. You've got to be such a brave boy. Yes, you do. Hey, you're hey. Hey, yes, so, Badger's back, Nath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says with a worried look in his eye. <laughs> He's a really sweet dog, but just not the best patient. Agreed, hence the muzzle. At Scott's Richmond Clinic, Badger is about to undergo major surgery to remove the massive tumour growing on his chest. Reagan, I don't know if you've met Badger. No, I have not. That is crazy. Yeah, it's not his most attractive feature, is it, champ? No. Unfortunately, I'd love to say that this is the first time we've removed it, but it's actually our third. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, a slow-growing sarcoma. It doesn't actually spread anywhere else in his body, but just continues to want to live on this side of his chest. And you can just think how taut. It's so tight, you can feel it. Yeah. It's like stretching all those muscles, and that's what's so uncomfortable. That's why you're panting all the time, aren't you, mate? Because you're just a little bit low-level uncomfortable all the time. Oh. So this time, third time lucky. Wow, look how vascular it is as well. With Badger's fur shaved off, the huge scar from his two previous surgeries is clearly visible. Right, here we go. It's the line Scott is using to go in for a third time. It has some semblance of being fatty, but it's granular. It just doesn't have any structure. I mean, once you get your finger, look, I mean, it just, it's just soft. Going in to remove this tumour, it is just hideous. It's just everything that you think would personify cancer. It has no structure to it. It pulls out like kind of wet porridge. There's a lot of blood supply to it as well. It's just huge and it's just horrible. The nasty tumour is especially confronting for Scott's new nurse, Reagan. No, I didn't expect it to be... Well, I don't really know what I was expecting, but not... Not this. Not this, no. No, no not quite. Yeah. 20 minutes into the surgery, Scott is becoming increasingly concerned. Badger's actually losing quite a bit of blood removing this because it's just so vascular. It's uh, within all the muscle layers of the chest and we can't control it because the blood vessels are... That there's no rhyme or reason to them. They're not growing in the normal way. So I'm just doing my best to be... to remove as much of the tissue as quick as possible. But it's uh, a little bit nerve-wracking at the moment. After 25 minutes, Scott has removed as much of the tumour as he can safely manage. 
I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull out, close it up. It's just, I've got as much out as I can. But suddenly... Have you got a heartbeat? Badger's condition starts to deteriorate. Oh okay. uh, yeah, I have got, got one. It's not very strong. And to keep a very close eye on that. Okay, just have a listen that he's definitely, definitely got a pulse still. Brag and put your hand underneath and feel the femoral pulse. I'm not sure if I'm feeling Can you get, just get James for us? Yeah, yeah just, just go, go, go run into pump up the suspect. Okay, just have a listen that he's definitely, definitely got a pulse still. At Scott's Richmond practice, Badger's tumour removal surgery has now turned into an emergency. Bragg, put your hand underneath and feel the femoral pulse. I'm not sure if I'm... Can you get, just get James for us? Yeah, just, yeah, us. just go, go, run into pump up the sauce, James. With Badger's condition rapidly deteriorating... Can you just put your arm up there and just, just have a feel for a pulse? Scott has called in vet James to assist. You can't feel the pulse? All hands on deck. I still am in a situation where I'm sterile, trying to complete the surgery because we can't stop the anaesthetic until I've closed this massive wound. So it does mean that I am hogtied. I can't use my hands, so I need my colleague James to come in and help with the CPR. He's taking a breath. That's a breath, Henry. Yeah. yeah. All right, the breathing is the really important thing, so just keep on breathing for him. Don't stop. I put him on two and just see how it goes. Yep. Have you got a heartbeat? Can you hear? I can, oh yeah, I have got, got one. It's not very strong. Is that him then? Let's yeah. throw some adrenaline at him. Same dose. Precious minutes are ticking by. But now, Badger is not responding. Can you feel anything? I can't hear anything. No adrenaline now? Yeah. Anything? Badger has now been unresponsive for over six minutes. And Scott is forced to make an agonizing decision. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna call it, guys. Good work, everyone. Okay. It's one of those things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's surgery stop. Yeah, you can't really. Can't leave it the way it was. No. I think the looks on everyone's faces, I think, says it all. Everyone's completely gutted, and especially Scott. Scott now has to make a heartbreaking phone call. Hello. Oh, hi, Sarah. Oh, hi. Hi, um, Scott here. Hi, Scott. Hi, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I haven't got good news for you, I'm afraid, Sarah. Yeah, he's, he passed away on the table, I'm afraid. Oh, my God. Oh, what happened? Tell me. I got probably two-thirds of the tumour out um, and uh, was just sort of cleaning up the edges before closing. He stopped breathing and this time we couldn't get him back. Oh, Lord. I just was so sure he was going to come through the surface. So, so, did, so did I. That's why I just, I'm like... I'm so sorry, Sarah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's devastated, as you would imagine. Um, straight away as a parent, she's thinking about the kids and thinking about the fact that she decided not to tell them before the surgery, thinking that they would worry. And so now, obviously, they're going to be so heartbroken that they didn't get a chance to say goodbye, which is just... You know, thinking about my kids and thinking about that happening to my dog, it would be very hard. So it's a, it's a bad, bad day. Yeah. Mm. 
Sorry, mate. Hospital sash with her critically ill cat. Okay, what's happening? He's his blood's like him, a grey black and he's lost all his Okay, heart. I'm gonna he take him oxygen. straight out the back and give him oxygen. You just stay out here and I'm no, I'm gonna take him out and I'll come and talk to you when he's stable. I'm just gonna mask this cat. He looks like crap. Can you just get an oxygen mask? Okay, this cat is blue. Um, he's really not getting much oxygen around his body. Emergency vet Lisa Chimes is almost certain the cat has swallowed human medication. I think he's had paracetamol toxicity. His gums, his lips are all swollen. Yeah. Paracetamol causes damage to the red blood cells so that they can't carry oxygen around the body. And when you can't carry oxygen around the body, you can't get oxygen to the, the brain and you die. In a cruel irony, the cat's name is Lucky. There is an antidote for paracetamol poisoning, but its effectiveness depends on how long the toxin has been in Lucky's system. Paracetamol can kill a cat within four hours, so we really have to act quickly. Hi, yeah. baby. It's okay. Yeah. okay. Ah, ah, ah. Stop it. At Sash, Lisa's under huge pressure to stabilise Lucky, but the terrified cat is fighting her health. It's alright, sweetie, calm down. Lucky has paracetamol poisoning and is just hanging on. No, come on. It's alright. Right. Right. Hey, kitty, hey, kitty. We can't give you an antidote if, if you keep moving. Come on. Okay, just get that oxygen mask on. We're stabilising him at the moment and he looks pretty bad, but I have seen cats that, that are this bad get better, so we're doing our best to pull him through this. Lisa needs to ask the owner, Wendy, for permission to give Lucky the antidote. We're not going to see the results straight away. How long and, does it take? Um, I mean, he could take several days to get better, <laughs> and, and I can't guarantee you that he's going to recover from this. Let's do but it but it's still, he still might not get better, okay? We, we're going to give him his best shot and do absolutely everything we can, but I, I can't ha promise you anything, okay? Look, he's been with us since he was two or three weeks old. He's like our own little baby, really. You know, he's, we syringe fed him, got the photo. He's just like one of the family, our little baby. I had no idea that paracetamol could do that sort of thing, you know, but I know he certainly didn't get it from us. What's happening? It's just really shallow breathing, and it, it did stop for a little bit. At Sash, Lisa is about to give Lucky an antidote for his lethal dose of paracetamol poisoning. Okay, can we get the crash cart? Lucky's just crashed and it's happened before we've even had a chance to give him the antidote. Is there a laryngoscope anyway? Yeah, he's just arrested. The toxin has shut down Lucky's system. His heart has stopped beating and he can no longer breathe on his own. We're giving the antidote while we're doing CPR. His chances aren't very good, but we've got to give everything we've got to get him home to Wendy. Sophia, do you want to stop for one second so I can see if we've got a... Actually, oh, there's some P waves. Okay. <sighs> what are my chances? Come on, kitty. Hey. I'm a lucky. He's called Lucky. Oh, lucky. Never call a cat Lucky. I'm Never call a cat Lucky. But be lucky, OK? Lisa is administering more atropine and adrenaline in a last desperate attempt to save Lucky. Oh. Oh, come on. She loves him so much. Unfortunately, Lucky hasn't made it and 
we did absolutely everything we could to try and get him through this and it, the toxin had just taken effect and, and it's too late. Wendy is convinced someone deliberately gave Lucky the paracetamol. You're pretty angry now. You know, I'm very angry that people are that wicked out there that they can kill little animals. <sighs> They're so helpless, you know. And he was so loving. It's like losing one of your children, you know. <sighs> it's, just, it's just heartbreaking. It is extremely important that people realise how toxic paracetamol is to animals, especially cats. And we've just seen Lucky lose his life because of paracetamol and people just need to be aware of how deadly it is. So I've just had a call from a girl called Lucy who's actually a veterinary nurse at Wildlife Aid. Uh, that's a band of dedicated uh, animal carers who look after sick and injured wildlife. She's called me about an injured fox. Now, foxes in the UK, they're a little bit like Marmite. You kind of either love them or you hate them. But as a vet, that doesn't matter to me. It's not my agenda. It's all about helping injured animals. So of course, I'm gonna go and see it. The Wildlife Aid Centre is 21 miles from London in Leatherhead, Surrey. Staffed mainly by volunteers, the team handles more than 20,000 wildlife emergencies every year. We've got all the equipment for you here. There's a towel. Okay. Some Kevlar Vet gloves. Vet nurse Lucy was on duty when the fox was Thank rushed you. in. Now, I caught her yesterday, so I'm going to get you to do it today. Okay, she's around this way? That's right, just okay. around there. All right, I'm going in. Wish me luck. Good luck. She was brought in after being found limping around a garden. Um, we expected that she'd been hit by a car. We could see it was a horrible fracture, so we needed to knock her out, um, give her an anaesthetic, and then x-ray and have a look at the leg. I'm really concerned with what I've seen on that x-ray. I don't think the dressing is going to be enough. So we'll see what Scott says. So whenever you're dealing with wild animals, at some point you have to catch them. So we're going to grab her with a towel, hopefully not get bitten, and then take her out for a quick exam. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Well, actually, I was pleasantly surprised. Sweetheart, you are. Come on, then. I was able to catch her nice and quickly, and she was actually a really sweet girl, so I've decided to call her sweetie. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lisa, I've got that muzzle in my pocket, actually. Can you grab it? Got it. There you go. Thanks very much. We actually put muzzles on foxes the wrong way up because it covers their eyes mm. and it means that she doesn't panic so much. Yeah, well, being a nocturnal animal, they probably enjoy being in the dark, do they? And she's much more relaxed and easier to handle when they're like that, so. The biggest concern that we've got regarding her leg is if her leg can't be fixed, it means she can't go back to the wild. So you're feeling a bit of pressure now because if this surgery doesn't go the way you want it to go, we'd have to put it to sleep. Mm. Would you have a look at her x-rays and see if anything can be done for her? All right, so should we try and pop her in the box yeah. then? Good girl. Good girl. That's it. So these are the x-rays that we took of the fox. Yeah, it doesn't take much to see the problem, does it? Right there, so mid-radius ulna or forelimb fracture there on this poor little lady. Oof. It's very, very swollen. Were the bones actually popping out of the skin? Was it an open fracture? No, it's a closed fracture. There's no wounds at all, just, just the swelling, as you can see. Yeah, no worries. Look, I will uh, take the drive to Michael's and I'll call you since I know anything. Okay. Thank you. All right, see ya. Good luck, little one. So for this, I think there's only one person in mind, one of my best mates, Michael Hamilton. He's a specialist orthopedic surgeon, and he's the man. When it comes to fractures like this and important patients, then yep, he's the one to call. Scott has arrived at the Cherry Tree Veterinary Practice in High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. Waiting inside for the injured fox is renowned orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. Hello, mate. How, How you doing? doing? Scott and Michael became best mates 15 years ago when they were single lads working together as locums in London. Scott, he's always been a hit with the ladies. He's a, he's a good looking lad. He seems to be getting more handsome as he gets older as well, which is really, really annoying. This is oh, sweetie. Hello, you. Seen the x-rays yeah. and uh, things aren't looking very good. Yeah. Not fairly nasty fracture, so yeah. Um, yeah, yeah no, we, can, we can sort that. Yeah, we'll st uh, stick a plate on. Should be right as rain. All right, should we go on through? Good stuff, yeah, let's crack on. Follow me. 
Michael is a Geordie. He says it like it is. He says it with a bit of colour, um, but he's a great surgeon. So Scotty, top the box off or open the door? Well, get, I, think, I think more to the point is that I got her in there, so I think it's fair that you <laughs> get her out. <laughs> oh. Hi, interrupting. Hello, Hi. Adams, come on in. It's BYO Vet Nurse Day today. Oh, hello. Um, we're just trying to work out who's going to get the fox out of the box. He's got the expensive finger, so I think it's going to be me again. <laughs> Hello, you're a bit gorgeous. Emma's afternoon it. off has oh, yeah. been cancelled. With Michael having no prior warning about Sweetie's surgery, the lads Hi. needed someone to help with the fox's anaesthetic. So when I got the call from Scott about operating on this wild fox, I was really, really excited. Anything new that I've not seen before or not dealt with excites me, and orthopaedics as well. It was just brilliant. Okay, yep, there we go. Thank you very much. Right, got her. Yep. The first muzzle of a fox. First muzzle of a fox. Wildlife need to come out absolutely perfectly because if they don't, they just can't function in the wild. So sadly, as a vet, it means if we can't fix them, we have to put them to sleep. It's not a great proposition. You happy? Oh, it's static, yeah? Nice. Yeah. Michael will be fitting a compression plate inside the fox's leg to stabilise the fracture. Here we go. It's a routine operation that he's performed countless times. But just as the surgery begins, oh, you're kidding me. there is a major hiccup. Seriously, man, this is not good. Repair loan drill. Thing. Michael's personal drills were taken for servicing yesterday, and the replacement drill has failed. Today of all days. If you swear enough, it'll work. Piece of Right, plan B. Everybody think happy thoughts. Oh, you've got to be f***ing kidding me. <laughs> like, is... what the f***? No, I think that's understandable. Oh, hello. I honestly can't explain what went wrong with the drill, but it certainly seemed to respond to Michael's colourful language. I'm not going to burn that up, because we might just need to use that for the screws in. He was definitely sweating a little bit, was Michael. I think having to go uh, back to using a hand drill was quite tough for him. Michael Hamilton gone old school. This is not even school. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this is prehistoric. With your hand, Scott, just pull yeah. the leg. Yeah. Right, that's it. No, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. If you can hold that one. Come on, drill. Come on, come on, darling. Come on, darling. <laughs> Once we've got two screws in, we're pretty much laughing. It's going all right now, as long as that drill keeps working. We've got a screw in the bottom there, look. Screw in the top there. The fracture line is under there somewhere. This fox is going to use this leg, hopefully, pretty much straight away. With the crisis over in the operating theatre, Emma lightens the mood. How many times have you two operated together? Probably like at least a handful of yeah, times. Yeah, probably not more than ten. Mm. Mm. Must say I'm quite impressed with, uh, with your equipment. Thanks, mate. Me too. Thanks, yeah. thanks Emma. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> I like your equipment, but Michael's is just a little... Shinier. Shinier. <laughs> well done, boys. Well done. We're not quite allowed to celebrate just yet, no. until okay, we've got fine. the x-rays. You got to do that. Michael's a magician. He does such great work. OK, x-ray. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And the plate is on really well. I reckon Sweetie's got a great future ahead of her. Yeah, it's great. Nice one. Well uh, done, mate. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, mate. You'll be one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Waking up now. It was a long surgery, wasn't it? Good girl. What a sweetheart you are. Hopefully, we will be seeing her running off into the wild in five, six weeks. She should do well. She's, she's young, which is definitely in her favour. Emma from Wildlife Aid will now take Sweetie back to Surrey for rehabilitation. There you go, Emma. One fixed fox. All yours. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Take care. Bye, sweetie. I'm very happy with the operation. She's a very lucky fox, so I'm glad for her. At Wildlife Aid, there's good news about sweetie. Her hand, that's perfect. Michael's surgery has been a success, and the fox should be back in the wild in just a few weeks.
nothing beats working with wild animals. So many times you let them go and you see them walking off and they look back as if to say thank you. And that's, that's the best feeling in the world, it really is. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.